26, and I suggest we start. What we will do at the start here is give you some information on how to handle Slido, where you can find the slides, uh, and where you can find the material uh, of the uh, Tinman report and the uh, responses to the Tinman report, uh, because this is the original document where the definition of the uh, minimum viable EOSC started. We have called this session minimum valuable EOSC in order to play a little bit with words, because the intention is to see what next do we need to develop built on what the minimum viable EOS could offer in order to make it more valuable for the ultimate users of uh, EOSC. But we'll come to that uh, in a minute. First, I would like to give the floor to Garrett, Garrett O'Neill, who will explain to you uh, the workings of the Slido, who will explain to you that you have to raise your electronic hand if you want to ask questions and a few other things. Garrett, the floor is yours. Thank you, Carl. I'm going to share the poll screen now. One moment. And I will ask you if you can see that on the screen. Yes, we can. Okay, so the first thing is in the chat section of the Zoom uh, room here, I have put three links. The first one is to Carol's presentation. The second one is to the Tin Man document from December 2019. And the third one is to the feedback analysis on the Tin Man document from the Working Group uh, Sustainability. Uh, if you look at the screen, you'll see a QR code. This is for the Slido that we are going to use. So we will ask you to direct all questions uh, through the Slido so that we can collect them and respond to them as we go through the session. And also afterwards, we can reply there. Uh, you can take a picture of the QR code on your phone and go straight to Slido, to this particular uh, uh, Slido questionnaire. Or you can type in slido.com, as you see on the screen. And in which case, then you'll need to add a code, and that is hashtag EOSC Hub Week. So I'll give a few seconds for people uh, just to take the picture of the QR or to type in slido.com and then the hashtag EOSC Hub Week. When you go in there, what you will see, you should see a whole list of sessions. Uh, I'm not quite sure how many there are with different color codes. And what you are specifically looking for is 18 May, addressing the content of a minimum valuable EOSC. So you are looking for the uh, specific session on 18 May, addressing the content of a minimum valuable EOSC. If you go there, you won't see anything just at the moment. You will see that there's two options, one for a question and answer session. You can ask a question there. I will show you, for instance, uh, I will put a test question there myself. This is how it will look. So there comes in a test question. And then what you will have is, uh, one moment, I will correct this. Here we go. Yep, there it is, test question. So you should be able to see that the question comes up on the screen there. That's how we're going to operate this, basically. Let me just uh, remove this. And what you will also see is a poll. So what we will do is uh, we're going to start with a poll uh, just to get everybody using Slido and to also uh, find out who you are and what you think of EOSC. So, Carol, what I will do is uh, I will start the poll now, and then you can take people through it. Yes, please share the first question. That's coming up now. I have stopped my video, so not to interfere with your screen. And this question is to get a feeling for which group or organization do you come from? And uh, I see a lot of people already understand the question. So do you feel you belong to a research performing organization? Do you feel you belong to a research funding organization? Or do you think you belong to a service provider? This can be, let's say, service providing in a technical sense, or can be service providing based on data. Uh, so in order to get a feeling for uh, what we have on board in this uh, session, could you please fill this in? There's already 43 that filled it in. That's great. These are, by the way, the same categories as will be in the EOSC uh, so, uh, association. So the AISBL we are going to make. Also there we have uh, made four groups, four categories, research performing organizations, research funding organizations, and service providing organizations. We have 50 out of uh, 96, that's not bad at all. 
wait for another few seconds. But if I read this correctly, then uh, the majority of the people online are either coming from a service providing organization or a research performing organization, unless all the others that did not answer the Slido come from another organization. We'll see. I remind you again that Garrett has put into the uh, chat session the links to the slides as well as the link to the Tinman documents. And I see here that people will need to log in uh, to their account on the site to get access. I see we have about 60 participants filling that in now. Shall we move to the next poll? That's a good idea, Garrett. I suggest we do, we move to the next poll. In this next poll, this is a little bit more personal. So now no, we're not asking you what type of organization do you come from, but what is your main activity as a person? Is that using data, producing data, handling data, providing compute facilities, providing storage to people, providing connections to people, uh, connect uh, over the internet, or providing other services? It's interesting if we have a lot of research performing organization that we only have so far seven uh, use data, produce data. Oh, it's increasing, it's increasing. But in line with the previous poll, uh, most of the organizations were providing an organization. So that's in line with data uh, handling, uh, providing compute, providing storage and providing connection. Then we have a very large uh, group that answered uh, provide other services. Uh, that's interesting and uh, we may later on come to that because if we want to move from a minimum viable to a minimum valuable EOSC, uh, it's important what type of services need to be com uh, coming in. And so it's interesting to see that there are a lot of people on board that also provide other services than the three mentioned here. I see we have again around 60. Shall I move forward to the last yeah, uh, Well, I see question. one interesting question in the chat. I'll just pick it up. Uh, yep. It says uh, it's uh, HPC. Is that another services? No, for me, that's a compute service. Uh, uh, so question in, uh, of definition, of course, but for me, that would be a compute service. Uh, Géant offers connect services and, and serve uh, Dutch organization, but many other organizations, for example, can also offer uh, storage services. Okay, we have 61. That's uh, about the number we had in the previous poll. So please, Garrett, let's move on to the next. And this is the word cloud. Yeah, so the question here is, can you put in a single word? And you are allowed to do that three times. So you can use multiple words, but not in one sentence in order to define what for you EOSC is. So we get a view on, on your feeling what EOSC is, and then you generate jointly a word cloud uh, with the words you're going to put in. That's interesting, bureaucratic. It is not even there and it's already bureaucratic. That's beautiful. An empty box, that's uh, correct. If it's not there, it's by definition an empty box. Trusted, I hope that must be trusted. Confusing, that's correct. It's still very vague and very confusing. Let's wait for another few answers and then.
Okay, we're close to 60 again. And uh, as you can see, uh, there's a lot of people uh, saying it's a federation. That's definitely the intention. It's definitely about data. And it's definitely about uh, offering services uh, based on those uh, data. My personal view is that, uh, and there's only a small uh, thing there called web of data, that ultimately EOSC uh, is not something which you can hold, not something which you can sell, not something which belongs to everybody, anybody, but it's like the world wide web, but then a web of fair data. Uh, where you can offer services based on that web, like you can offer services based on the present web of pages. But this is a matter of discussion, and this is my view. This is so what I'm saying the EOSC association is not the same as EOSC. EOSC is going to be something out there belonging to all of us and hopefully joining with the rest of the world in order to become a web of fair data worldwide rather than a only European uh, venture. Uh, with that, I'm going to switch on my camera again. So if you want to, you can see me. And I move on uh, to my presentation. That was the intention, uh, wasn't it, Garrett? Sorry, I unmute myself. Yes, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. I just see one question come in quickly. I'll just throw it out. Yep. Uh, I'm among those, those who provide added value data services. I'm surprised that this is not one of the categories of services. Maybe we can come back to that uh, in the following questions that we'll have. Yeah, can you keep that up, uh, Garrett? And then people, that's interesting, maybe it's good to mention here, people can like a question and then uh, uh, by that, uh, double the question. And the more people like a certain question, uh, the higher it gets in the ranking of questions uh, to be uh, answered. So uh, if you want a certain question to be answered, please uh, put a like behind the question in the Slido poll. I'm now stopping my screen, Carl, and give it back to you. Thank you, then I will share my screen. Here we go. This is the screen I would like to share. I go back one slide. Can you see my screen, uh, Garrett? I can see it, yes. Okay, then I assume everybody else can see it. Uh, and let me remove my own uh, picture here, okay. Uh, as I said, for me, EOSC is a web of fair data, and uh, in her presentation in Davo, uh, Ursula von der Leyen called it a web of scientific insight. In her written text, by the way, it said web, web of fair data. So uh, this is the basis on which services can be built. The services directly on, on the data, services uh, in relation to the data, and we see this as very similar to the services that are offered through the World Wide Web based on the fact that we do have a web where, they, where pages are linked and uh, where people can use uh, the uh, linkage uh, in order to, let's say, buy things or book a hotel or buy a plane. Well, at least by uh, booking a plane that you could do in the past. Then it's a federation uh, of existing services and new services to come. Eh? And uh, as the third point stresses again, it's a virtual space where science producers and consumers come together uh, in order to produce something and ultimately uh, worldwide as far as we are concerned. So it's an open-ended range of content and services. When the World Wide Web came to be, uh, we all did not have any idea on what was coming. And by now we have a pretty good idea after 30 years and it's still developing. And uh, in the case of EOSC, where this would then be the European part of uh, such a worldwide web of fair data, uh, we maybe could add especially the quality mark data made in Europe. So if we can be ahead of the pack in a worldwide development like this, we might be able to sort of uh, use the standards we have in Europe. Let me move on. Uh, in my presentation, I often use this picture uh, for the EOSC. Uh, EOSC being a, a twin brother or twin sister of what I call the e-infrastructures. For me, the e-infrastructures are the store, compute, and connect. The same words we used in the poll just a moment ago. And uh, EOSC is, let's say, the supplement of that, the yin or the yang, depending on what you call it. Uh, of the e-infrastructures. Uh, 
offering services and especially servicing the data and the interoperability. So e-infrastructures without data in them do not mean anything. Like data without e-infrastructures, they don't mean anything either. So one needs the other, but one is different than the other. So EOSC is going to be the complement uh, of e-infrastructures. And of course, a lot of data already exists and are in these e-infrastructures. So EOSC is not, let's say, the invention of data. What could be the for, uh, possible core functions uh, for EOSC. If we look at that, we find the following. Uh, develop and govern the federating core. And sorry, I call this EOSC, but this I should have called in this slide the EOSC uh, ASBL, as we now call it. Uh, this is an old slide, and at that time, we did not differentiate clearly between EOSC as such and the EOSC association, which we are creating. So this slide, I will modify it later, is about the EOSC association that could develop and govern this federating core. It could manage the compliance framework or have it managed. It could manage the trusted certification or again, have it managed. It could manage the AI or have it managed. The PID policies. It will definitely do outreach to stakeholders. This was a question earlier this morning. And uh, yes, uh, in the Rupert session there, uh, he addressed it and he also said the association has this as one of the tasks. It will monitor the services and the transactions taking place, and it will take care of the EOSC trademarks. Last but not least, it will contribute to Horizon Europe policy. Otherwise, we cannot make as an association a MOU with the commission, and that's the structure to be. Items we are working on in the executive uh, and governance board at the moment to give you a feeling for where we stand is the EOSC partnership proposal. We've just uh, finished draft number eight, which will be discussed on Wednesday in the governing board and hopefully accepted. And then it will be out for the world, like all the other partnership proposals will be. Uh, we are working, and there was a session this morning by Jean-Francois on the strategic research and innovation agenda. So this will be updated now, huh, today, as we will speak. And the consultation will start in, in June. Again, this also will be out in the open to uh, the whole world in order to give input. Then uh, the EOSC work plan is being uh, revised or updated. The rules of participation uh, are being uh, uh, run for consultation. That has finished actually the consultation round and the landscape analysis report also finished its consultation. So these are documents you should be able to find through the EOSC secretariat. The first iteration of EOSC by 2020. Uh, we are working on a agreed and tested set of rules. This is the rules of participation group, the analysis of existing national infrastructures and policies, the landscape group, a financing model uh, discussed also this morning, uh, legal entity, we have chosen the AISBL and the governance structure. Both of that are worked on by the sustainability group. The operational federated core, we will uh, mention that word again later on, and that is being worked on by the architecture working group an initial set of data and services, again, the architecture working group and the interoperability framework, which they do together with the FER working group. Then the FAIR and architecture working group are working on a persistent identifier policy, not a new one, but look at what is out there and how to combine that and the metrics for FAIR data and certified services. Again, the FAIR working group. This is work going on that should be finished by the end of the year to such a state that we can include it in what is then the minimum viable EOSC. Uh, the minimum viable EOSC includes three, let's say, things you could say. The core, uh, the federated data. If there are no data, it's of no use to build a core. And the exchange with those that offer services on top of the data. Again, the question this morning in the session, uh, uh, I think it was a session of Jean-Francois, will there be services in the minimum viable EOSC? Yes. How much and how many, that depends of course on how far we are with creating this minimum viable EOSC. So it starts with zero at this moment because it's not there and it will grow hopefully rapidly by members of the association that will offer their services uh, through the EOSC exchange. It must be uh, enabling thus the federation of existing and planned research data infrastructures and it should federate the disciplinary clusters and regional projects as a first critical step as also Rupert mentioned this morning, 
And we would like to start with simple use cases. So data that are not only fair, but that are open as well in order not to work with sensitive and closed data in the very beginning. But very soon after that, the step of course should be made to fair data as such, uh, not necessarily being open. Uh, but this will be the initial start. Then what are the core functions? The core functions, as Rupert also mentioned this morning, is to provide means to discover, to share, to assess, and to reuse data. It will not, EOSC will not, uh, uh, as I have, uh, 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 let's say, said by defining EOSC, but uh, also the association will not store, transport, or process data. Definitely not in the beginning, but maybe never. And it should be used as widely as possible. So uh, people need to be uh, an authenticated user uh, and uh, hopefully promote the, the system. Then uh, the proposed coverage, and we will come back to that in a question in a minute. This is a list, not exhaustive list, uh, of a number of items that will be in the proposed coverage in this in this initial uh, minimum viable EOS. As I said, we'll come back to that in a minute. Well, the second and third, depending on how many steps we take, will be uh, around 2024 when the public sector and the private sector should be included into this system. And there, one of the discussions taking place, is this going to be one marketplace or is it going to be more marketplaces? Can they be combined into one thing or not? Uh, so these are not completely new users because some of the public sector uh, uh, organizations already are part of the projects uh, in which private uh, the the, uh, uh, the 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 uh, research organizations are uh, involved in, as well as some industrial partners uh, will be there already. I see there's a lot of questions appearing in the chat. The intention was to put the questions in the Slido. Uh, so with this uh, presentation, I would like to enter this moment and we move back, uh, Garrett, to the Slido. Yeah, I'll share that now. And I just note that there's, there's discussion in the chat, but there are questions coming in on Slido. Okay, great. I didn't monitor that because I was giving a presentation. I will bring them up now. And you should be able to see the questions that are there. So uh, maybe just to come down to the, the question there from, uh, just let me find it. Per Olaf, it's a clarification question. Could you please elaborate on your sentence that EOSC, rather than just being the EOSC association, is something else belonging to all of us? What does this concretely mean? I think that refers to the distinction between the EOSC association and maybe the EOSC ecosystem. Yes, that's a, that's a good question uh, because uh, we uh, have in many discussions seen the confusion between what we are now organizing as a federation, uh, sorry, of, as an association of members that jointly uh, support this idea of creating a, an EOSC and the EOSC itself. What we like to create is a virtual environment where data can be shared, where data can be found, where data can be, let's say, combined. Uh, we are not creating an association that owns these data, that owns the repository, or that is the EOSC. So EOSC and the EOSC association are two distinct things for me. Where the EOSC association is something uh, which is a legal entity in this case, uh, and you can phone it up. Uh, I don't think you can phone up the EOSC or send a letter to EOSC. Well, maybe you can through the net, but for us, EOSC is the virtual environment in which these data are shared. We sometimes refer to it as the EOSC uh, ecosystem. Uh, the ecosystem of uh, 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 federated data repositories and the services uh, on top of that. Garrett, you have probably a better view over what questions are on top. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit hard to read. So can you go to the next uh, question? Then if somebody, by the way, by the way, wants to to have the the microphone unmuted, you could raise your hand and ask uh, permission to do so. There is two questions uh, related to the federating or federated core, so I'll address them. Uh, one was seen as, a, as a, a simple question. So what exactly is the federating core? And then that comes back to the question then, the follow-on question, is the federated core considered to be part of the EOSC valuable product? Yes, uh, with the last question, simple. The EOSC valuable, uh, as we are going to discuss in a minute, uh, is the minimum viable EOSC 
plus. So the things we build on top of that. And the federating core is basically the software that makes uh, it possible to find data, uh, to access data, to use interoperability uh, possibilities. Uh, so the EOS core is going to uh, have to solve the questions like these, which many of them are not solved at all at the moment. Then uh, following on, uh, there's a question uh, related to uh, your yin yang model. So yep. the question is, aren't E infrastructures part of EOSC? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, this, this picture arose before the EOSC ASBL uh, was there. Uh, uh, the uh, E infrastructures definitely, in our view, are going to be members of the EOSC ESBL, uh, but nobody will be part of EOSC if EOSC is this virtual environment like the World Wide Web. So, yes and no. Uh, the uh, E infrastructures uh, are uh, definitely going to be members of the EOSC association. Uh, and if you would call that a EOSC, then the answer is yes. If you call the EOSC the virtual environment, then the answer is no. But then nobody is part of it. Okay, and that, I think that relates to another question that came up. The definition of EOSC is still not fully clear. Uh, and then referring to the yin yang model of E infrastructures and the EOSC the data. Um, so I will move on from this one. There are questions related to data itself. So a comment was EOSC has been more about services than data so far. Uh, first time that this person was asked about EOSC, the main question was, well, where is the data? And then a follow on question there is. Uh, is from a person who is involved in the added value data services and that they're not surprised that this is not listed in the category of services. Uh, I don't know what is meant by added value data services. For me, this is just one of the services, but I have no catalog of services so far. Yes, I must uh, agree that, that uh, before the, let's say, recent uh, developments in the executive and governance board, EOSC has been mainly about uh, services and hardly about data. That's why I deliberately put the e-infrastructure, which are also services, and the data uh, apart. Uh, but the EOSC is all about data, ultimately, of course, uh, except we, we don't have EOSC yet. So uh, the, the data still have to be federated. The data are out there to a certain extent. By the way, if we speak about data, uh, the emphasis we put is much more on future data than on present data. Of course, those data that are as fair as possible at this moment and those data we have to keep online of make fair afterwards anyway uh, will be there. Uh, but most of the data two years from now will be newly generated data in EOSC in my, in my view. And yes, if we talk about EOSC, we should definitely talk more about data than only the services on top of the data. Next question, Mary. Just to come back, uh, linking again to this, the, the distinction between data and the services. Um, sorry, one moment. Uh, data without services are dead, and services without interoperable data are empty. Uh, I don't uh, know if you want to comment that's on correct. this. That's correct. <laughs> okay, and then I move forward again. Uh, one moment. So uh, I'll ask a question related to interoperability. Uh, how is it possible to okay? This is how is it possible to participate in the interoperability working group uh, with EOSC to contribute towards building the federated core? Uh, my suggestion would be to approach uh, Jean Francois and uh, Jean Francois Abramatic and uh, Sarah Jones to see how you can help them with creating this uh, this core and then this uh, uh, interoperability. Uh, just the interoperability uh, framework uh, uh, came out. Uh, the first uh, draft of that. Okay, and a final question I think for now uh, is if initially the core and then in, in inverted commas will not store, transport or process data, at least initially, uh, its function is similar to a search engine. What is the added value instead of starting with a minimal but fully functional data plus process plus transport? Uh, this is a, a, a rather technical question, uh, which I must be honest, I'm not uh, qualified to answer. Uh, we'll take that up and, and we'll see to it that an answer uh, comes. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's just a search engine, but it is software uh, indeed. So it is similar uh, uh, to that. Um, the, the core possibilities on the internet uh, and creating the possibilities of the World Wide Web are partially technical because of the standards we have and are partially software because of the operations we can do. 
And this will be the same in this case. Whether the technical part needs to deviate from the existing internet, I'm not sure. So whether something technically is needed uh, on top of the present internet or whether this can be only done with software, which I think uh, that I'll leave to the architecture uh, working group. Okay, and then I refer just to a comment, uh, one of the recent comments that was made in the chat. Uh, this is an opinion from Mark von Lassonde that EOSC is not about one kind of service or only data. The advance of EOSC is that a large variety of services and data can be made available through EOSC. And to him, EOSC is more a channel towards services and data. Yeah, that's the way you could put it, I think. So I would agree with that. Uh, and ultimately, it's not only, no, no, I should put it differently. For us, data is any digital object. So we, we use the word data, maybe we should use the words digital objects, because that's what you're going to interconnect. So it can also be uh, software, and it can also be uh, publications in the end. So okay. some of the content and some of the questions are now starting to move towards uh, what services uh, should be in the minimum viable or minimum valuable EOSC. Should we move on to the polls? Yes, let's do that, uh, Garrett. Uh, one moment. Okay, so question four on the poll should now be uh, available in uh, Slido for everybody to fill in, uh, if you want to explain that, Carol. Yes, uh, this is a question about the minimum viable EOSC, as you see between the two asterisks, and we will come to the minimum valuable EOSC uh, later on. By the way, both of these terms are not exactly defined. Huh? That's one of the reasons why we put questions like this. The minimum viable is much more defined than the minimum valuable, because this is, as far as I know, the first discussion on the minimum valuable. Uh, and uh, so we have put out, especially through the Timman report, what are the uh, services that are definitely needed in order to create a minimum viable EOSC? And I see that you all agree that the AIA frame, AI, I, AAI framework is part of that. Yes, the data access uh, uh, framework for fair data, etc. The PID framework and the help desk. Uh, yeah, you should be able to call somebody or at least send an email. Can you put up the screen, Garrett, so we can see the underside for a moment? Yeah. There's a little other, so that's interesting. I leave it for a few more seconds to fill in. Okay, what I learned from this so far is that uh, apparently to uh, several people, the services management and access framework is not a clear thing, which I can understand. And the open metrics framework, if they understand it, is probably not needed as hard as some of the others, which could be indeed uh, the case because there is discussions uh, on that. Uh, we have 52, Garrett, I suggest we well, let's wait a few more seconds, but it will not really change the thing. There's no real competition between two bars. Huh? Yep. The picture AI is clear. Fair data sticks out here. Yep. Let's move on, uh, Garrett, to the uh, next poll. Yep. Uh, that should be there now. This is an open question. Um, let me uh, remark uh, remark van der Zande. Uh, uh, data does not float in midair. Absolutely. That's what I said. Data without uh, the infrastructures, uh, the e-infrastructures doesn't mean anything. So therefore the yin-yang uh, picture, uh, Mark. So here the question is, what services should be in the minimum valuable EOSC? So what, what do we not have in the minimum viable EOSC in order to create at least the start of what uh, EOSC could be? And uh, this will be difficult, Garrett, for people to see because it's going to be a long, long list. Maybe we should, because people are answering only with one word, we should have used the word cloud here. Huh? Yeah, I think so, now that we look at it. <laughs> uh, good, good to know for the next one. 
Shall I just scroll down as they come in? I can always go back uh, yes, to the yeah, top if, at the end. If you scroll back and uh, up and forth a little bit, then, uh, and we can pick out the interesting one and start discussing. I see several times compute or compute power. This is a discussion uh, going on. This, uh, let's say two groups of people. Some people think that the compute should be offered through EOSC. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether that will add something uh, with respect to having compute possibilities online. Now you can also access uh, high performance computing facilities or you can access other compute facilities. Why should it go through EOSC? Uh, I don't see directly the added value. Of course, uh, the compute facilities can use EOSC and the data uh, that are available through EOSC. Uh, but I'm not sure whether uh, you should go to EOSC or through EOSC in order to get a compute facility. So I'm not sure whether a compute facility or computing or high performance computing should be a, a service uh, offered through uh, EOSC. Uh, but of course, uh, if uh, an organization is, is, uh, is very creative and in intimately links the access of data to the compute uh, facility, uh, sure, I'm sure uh, organizations will be able to manage that. Can you scroll slowly from the top to the bottom, uh, Garrett, to see uh, if there's other things we should command on? Yeah, I'm back at the top now, so starting with okay. small distributed compute, and I'll go slow. Uh, I'll go slowly through the words. Monitoring, yeah, uh, uh, that depends on what we have to monitor. Accounting, yes. Federated repos. I don't know what that is. Uh, reproduction repositories. facilities. Repositories. Yeah, sure. That, that, but that's in the minimum viable EOSC already. Several times compute. Processing for service requests. That depends with the provider. That's maybe a good. Can you stop here for a minute? And um, th that's also an interesting discussion. Uh, is EOSC combining the possibilities for providers responsible for what the providers offer? In my view, not. It's like with the World Wide Web. If you offer a service through the World Wide Web, either connecting your, uh, to the World Wide Web, so having a provider to enter your home uh, with the internet connection, or having a provider that offers the possibility to book a hotel room, like booking.com, et cetera, then I think these providers are responsible for the services they offer. And I do not see any difference here. I do not see EOSC or the EOSC Association uh, becoming responsible for the services offered by service providers on uh, the system. The core services is a different story. Uh, so uh, depending on, on where the hardware, but most likely the software for the core services belongs, uh, also there the responsibility lies. And there's some responsibility maybe with the uh, ASBL, AISBL, sorry. Resources catalogs, yes. Personalized dashboard, uh, interesting. Uh, that, that's a discussion as well. Should we have one portal or one dashboard for EOSC? Um, I don't think so. I, I think EOSC is a pervasive thing, thing. So there's many, many portals, many dashboards. Uh, and again, depending on the provider offering services based on EOSC, uh, you, you can have a dashboard or uh, you can have a, a, a portal. Secure transactions, yeah. Training, compute, storage, networking, uh, access to scale. Yeah, well, I've said a lot of things. HPC, I think I've discussed. User-friendly catalog. Uh, interfaces provide friendly harvesting. Yeah, make it as user-friendly as possible, absolutely. Training, yeah, the, again, the training can be offered through uh, EOSC, of course, and training can be offered based on what is needed in order to use data, to work with data. Whether the EOSC association should start offering training is again a question I'm not sure of, but the minimum valuable EOSC will of, of course lead you to training uh, facilities. Same for research data management. Yeah, then there's a few that are already in the core, uh, core and in the uh, minimum value one. Okay, maybe uh, Garrett, we should stop this and go to the open questions uh, again, uh, unless we have another active poll here. I don't think uh, we have. Huh? No, this was the final poll. 
Okay, we have 15 minutes left for uh, uh, open questions or if people want to speak, uh, as I said, they can raise their hand and uh, either Garrett or Rob will point me at raised hands and we can offer the floor to somebody uh, to come in. Just waiting for the questions to come up. This seems to be... So if you have so questions, please, please put them in the Slido uh, again. And if you want to say something, please raise your hand. I'm not seeing any, at least that I see at the moment. I'm there's not seeing... A, sorry, yep. there's a raised hand from yeah. Fotis. I am unmuting him. Okay. Fotis, you may now yeah. uh, speak. You, can, you should unmute yourself, yeah. Yes, hi. Hi, Karel. Hi. Thanks. Welcome. Uh, yeah, I was the one uh, making the comment about the personalized dashboard. Yes. Uh, so, but this is is actually the uh, the vision for the for the end. Uh, let's say a tool for for researchers. Um, and I think in in between there should be multiple views. You know, for example, besides the European, there should be national views of the portal or regional. But I think that the personalized dashboard uh, is indeed thousands of different views it's different for each uh, researcher. So uh, it's not like you are saying it's, it is one, it is, it is uh, you know, multiple ones. And uh, this is, uh, let's say, um, uh, serving the needs of each individual researcher and uh, getting to learn also with, uh, you know, artificial intelligence tools and so on, and being really useful, gathering all data, all services, all workflows, relevant to the user. Yeah, I agree mm -hmm. with you then, uh, if it's not one thing, but then who's going to offer it? It will be the providers, I assume, offering a personalized dashboard for uh, whatever user they are addressing to. Or do you see this as a task of the AOS, uh, ASBL, AISBL, the association? Uh, yeah, I, th I see it as a, as a central thing, as a centralized thing. Who does it? Uh, maybe, you know, it's, a, it's part of a project already in the EOSC uh, 03 call. There, there are features like this, which is in the right direction, I think. So maybe some prototype will appear already after this uh, project, the follow-up of EOSC Hub. But I think it's a central thing and it should be provided either by the legal entity or by a project, follow-up project. Yeah, well, if it's provided by a project, then this project, if, if it becomes more than a project and if it remains, it, it can be the provider. But that the, if, if the EOSC legal entity or the association has to take on board everything organized by the projects, then we get a, a, a very, very large association in order to handle all that. Uh, remember, through the projects, we have spent something like 350 million euro and created a lot of things. These cannot be maintained by an association which has five to ten people employed. How do you think this is being, being done? Yeah, okay. It may be part of the projects that will be funded. Uh, sure. You know. uh, and then, then, then we will become a provider. And then I agree with you. Providers, okay. of course, can offer that. Yeah. Okay. Carol, I come to some questions that are coming in now on the Zoom before we can go to EGI, who has a raised hand. So. Uh, a comment that came in uh, from Sean DeWitt. The concept of multiple dashboards will just add to the existing chaos. Can you explain why you think this is a good idea? Yeah, maybe you should just discuss this with Fortis. Uh, I didn't come up with it, he came up with it. So I leave this to a discussion between the two of you. They can carry that on perhaps in the chat. Then I yep. come to a question from Tiziana. Uh, will the minimum viable EOSC proposal be validated with consultations with research communities? Wait a minute, can I read that somewhere? Will the minimum viable EOS proposal be validated with consultation with research communities? Yes. What is the minimum viable EOS proposal? Is that a proposal made by the uh, uh, sustainability working group? And, and, and um, what do you mean by consultation with research communities? So this is not clear to me, Tiziana. Maybe you can take the floor and uh, ask your question. Uh, hello everyone. Thanks hi, for hi. Thanks for this opportunity. So the question is about uh, the definition of the minimum uh, viable um, EOSC that you presented. I hope I'm using the right uh, terminology. 
you use the viable versus the valuable, I think. Yeah, well, well what I'm trying, may, sorry to interrupt you, but what I'm trying in this session is to come from what has been defined in the Tinman report as the minimum viable. And I don't see why that needs to be validated because this is just a, a definition given by the Tinman report uh, and, and how to validate that, that depends on, on what you view as minimum viable, but that's a, a definition we adapted as a, uh, mm -hmm. the executive board. And I deliberately introduced the uh, word valuable because with the minimum viable, which can survive, uh, we're not there. We want to create more. And this is also what is uh, shown by Rupert in the second and the third phases. So I wanted to move to these second and third phases for later on. What is additional on top of the minimum viable EOS that could be of value? Sure. So what the question is, um, uh, in your function of the EB chair, will the research communities be uh, consulted, uh, polled, uh, to make sure that this uh, MVE is uh, meeting their expectations and requirements? Is there a process for that, a plan? Uh, are you talking about the definition? So that has been consulted to everybody, including the research communities, by the consultation of the Timmerman report. Or are you talking about the minimum viable EOSC if it's out there, let's say in 2021, 2022? A consultation with uh, prospective end users, like a market analysis. No, do uh, I understand? Or, or but the are content, you... not the definition, but uh, the content, what it should uh, provide. As, yeah, but that's uh, the definition. So uh, you're talking about the consultation next year or the year after that? No, I'm just asking what is uh, the process to consult with users and if there is a process in the plan to be implemented for that? Not that I know. There is no further consultation process taking place that was done uh, on the Tim report that included the definition. Their consultation took place to a large audience, including research communities with respect to the text. Uh, maybe later on, if it exists, a consultation should take place uh, or a poll should take place. Well, well, is this what we understand it to be and is this what we would like? So if this is with respect to the definition, I think my answer would be no. Can we move on with the next yep. question, Garrett? I go on to the next question from Katrina. Does EOS intend to lead, for example, in defining and promoting certain standards or to follow what their contributors use or promote push? Or push. Uh, if by EOSC is meant here the uh, EOSC AS, AISBL, uh, the legal entity or the association, uh, then the intention is, of course, listening to uh, the world and, and getting certain uh, standards uh, being pushed and seeing what is being pushed and seeing what contributors bring in uh, to make choices, definitely. Uh, uh, but preferably, in my view, not choices one over the other, but in, in, in cases where this is possible, for example, with a PID, this I think is often, often possible uh, choices that includes as many of the uh, possible standards or definitions. So let's, let's take uh, PIDs as an example. There are a lot of existing PIDs out there. The intention, of course, is not to put them out of work or to put them out of uh, service uh, and, and, and replace it by something else. So what we should come up with is something that encompasses uh, uh, this. Again, uh, Katrina, I don't know her, but uh, if, if you want to reflect to that, raise your hand and, and you'll get the floor. So there comes more discussion. And I refer to a comment as, that I see in the chat section uh, from Bob Jones. The Tinman document states that the minimum viable EOSC will be considered operational when key data sets and services provided by EOSC implementation projects, including the cluster projects, are accessible by end users who are external to these projects. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, can, can I read it somewhere? Uh, it's Gary? in the chat section. So what it says is, uh, I'll read it again slowly. Uh, it's a couple of comments up. Uh, the Tinman document states that the minimum viable EOSC will be considered operational when key data sets and services provided by EOSC implementation projects, including the cluster projects, are accessible by end users who are external to these projects. So uh, the clarification question. Yeah, I know this definition. I think this is a, a correct one. Whether all the EOSC cluster uh, projects need to be in or all the cluster projects need to be in, 
uh, I put a question mark, but uh, uh, yeah, basically this is uh, the intention. Okay, I see a question uh, from Francois who has her hand up, so I'll lower her hand if she wants to take the floor. Francois. Yes, it was uh, more or less a comment to Bob Jones' comment, which was maybe a comment to one of my comments, which is that I, I was pushing the fact that it would be very uh, indispensable that the, the data and the services which are in EOS can be accessed by different points of entry, which means not by the top, a top point of entry at the top of EOS, but by the sides, by below and so on. Yeah, that's and that the, people are able to compose services as they wish and do not have to follow the top-down approach to the services. Uh, I don't think we intend to have a top-down approach. At least me, we as executive board not. So uh, you're completely right. They should be accessible from different sites and uh, services can also be accessed without accessing EOS call without. Uh, so in my view, if a service provider uh, becomes uh, a member of the EOSC association and puts his or her services through the network of EOSC, that service provider can also be approached directly and does not, I, I don't think in terms of top down. If you, if you use the World Wide Web, uh, you also not work top down. Okay, then I see we have a few minutes left. I come to a, a question slash comment from Jean-Claude. Reading the replies, going in all directions. Imagine we would start the MVE as a company tomorrow and with our own money, wouldn't we be more precise and to the point? Yes, Jean-Claude, we would definitely more precise and to the point uh, because then we would start from our own initiative with our own money coming from our own thinking. But here we try to create something which is in line with the thinking of 40 countries and of a platitude of organizations that have been stimulated by the commission in the past and in the present time. And we try to bring all of that uh, together, especially all those projects and organizations that have EOSC in their name in some sort of form. So uh, with all respect, the commission hasn't made life easy for the present governance structure. We're trying to combine everything as much as possible. But if you have a bag of money, I'll be happy to start a company tomorrow and create this. Okay, then I come to a question in the chat section from Bert uh, Mirman. Will the minimum valuable EOSC support data visiting where sensitive private data will be visited by smart algorithms or queries? Uh, not very initially, I think, uh, because we start with open data, remember, only. So that is not sensitive data. But yes, Bert, uh, very soon after that, if, if we see that the core works, um, in my view, we should switch from uh, fair and open to fair only. And then we have to be able to handle sensitive data also uh, with machine actionability. Basically, this is one of the main tasks in order to create a web of fair data that it can be handled and uh, uh, approached by the machine. In the partnership proposal, I put it as follow, the machine should be able to find it. So it should be able to find data or better the metadata belonging to a data set. The machine should be able to access it, to uh, access the metadata in order to be able to determine what can be done with the data set. And in these metadata, there also should be the information on what the machine is allowed to do with the data set. So yeah, the intention is absolutely to create machine actionability. Uh, when we reach this stage, and then in a broad sense, uh, that, that has to be seen. Some of the, let's say, domains, disciplines, uh, already have this possibility within their own discipline uh, to do this type of approaches. But in a broad sense, uh, at this moment, this is not possible. If you look at the partnership proposal we have as a KPI, this, this should become, uh, we hope, available around 2024, 2025. And the final question uh, that I see in the, uh, in the, in the Slido, uh, what about the metadata catalog function of EOSC? Is there any reason to aggregate metadata also at national level of member states that will be federated towards European meta catalog together with thematic based repositories? Um, I am not again the expert to be able to handle this, uh, 
but in order to find metadata uh, with a machine, I think some sort of catalog is uh, needed. Whether the national level member states have a role here to play or whether the owners or uh, let's say uh, procurement people of the data, the people that take care of the data have a role to play here, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe different from data set to data set. Uh, but uh, for those that can be federated into a European system, uh, I think we should do so. Okay, um, I think we should stop it there. The questions, just a comment I see in the chat. So uh, thank you for the good presentation and question and answer session. Uh, do you want to finish off? I think uh, we're now hitting the moment to go to break and I think everybody comes back at four o'clock. Yeah, I would like to finish off. Thank you very much, uh, Garrett. I would like to thank the organization for offering the technical facilities to run this very smooth, as far as I'm concerned, session. I would like to thank the participants. And what we will do is we will look uh, at the chat uh, later on to see if there's additional questions that need to be uh, answered. And uh, the same thing we will do with the Slido questions. They are preserved by definition. I wish you all a good afternoon and a good uh, rest of the EOS Cup week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone.